Father, we thank you for your word tonight. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your peace. Thank you for your joy, Lord. Help us to just walk in the fullness of your word tonight. Help us to walk in the light of your word. Father, we pray according to Psalm 119, verse 18, that says, Open thou mine eyes, that I may behold wondrous things in your word. Open up our eyes, Lord. Let us see wonderful, wondrous, glorious things in your word. We don't just study your word for the sake of knowing what you've said. but because we believe what you've said. We believe what you've said, so we want to know everything that you've said, and we want to know everything about what you've said. Because we believe your word. <laughs> oh, yes. Lord, I said, we believe your word. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. That's why we are so interested in what you've said. Because we believe it, Lord. We believe it. We believe what you've said. We believe what you've said. We believe what you've said. We receive it. We accept it. We live by it. We walk by it. We stand on it. We build our lives upon it. Upon what you've said. What you've said. Upon what you have said. We build our life upon it. Lord, let it be a magnificent night in your word tonight. Give us open eyes, open ears, open hearts, open minds. We need to receive everything that you have for us, Lord. We need to receive it. We must have it, Lord. We must have it. We must have what you said. We believe it. Say that right now. I believe it. I believe the word. Say that. I believe the word. I believe what you have said. I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. And I refuse to doubt it. I believe 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 it. Remember we talked a few weeks ago, we said, just believe it. Hey, hey, we believe it. <laughs> hey, hey, we believe it. We believe it. If God said it, then we believe it. If God said it, then we believe it. And that's it. 
です。Oh. What are you doing here, Lord? You're doing something. Just hang here for a minute. Just, just, just stay here for a minute. The Lord's doing something. He's doing something. Believe it and just receive it. Whatever he's doing in your heart, whatever he's doing in your life right now, just believe it and just receive it. Just let him do what he wants to do. He's working on, he's working on people right now. He's touching hearts right now. He's changing destinies right now. He's turning hopeless situations around right now. You said there's no use, there's no point, it can't happen. He's turning that around right now. With God on your side, the case is never closed. It's never over. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what it feels like. I don't care what it seems like. When you have God, the story's never over. The story is never over until you win. It's never over until you win. So open up your heart. Just receive. Whatever it is that he's doing right now, whatever it is that he's doing, whatever he's speaking to you about, whatever he's ministering, ministering to your heart about, just receive it right now. Ah. <sighs> <clears throat> okay. Uh, okay. We're going to follow the Lord. As we always do. So, now you guys are believing with me. I know that you are. Believe with me tonight. Um, the Lord just um, changed directions on us completely here. I have more for us to go into out of the book of Joshua. I mean, we've, I mean, we've barely even gotten to the to the, the heart of what I want to talk about there. But as I was in prayer tonight, prior to the service, as I was just worshiping and praying and just spending some time with the Lord as I do, all of a sudden, 
I mean, just, I don't know how to explain it, but he just impressed upon my heart, Moses, just Moses, something about Moses. And I don't even fully understand it, but he said, go there. So I don't have anything planned here. Well, I mean, I should say, I don't know where he's going to take us here, but I just, he gave me a starting point. So we're going to start there and we'll see where it goes. Praise the Lord. Uh, turn to Exodus chapter 33, please. You know, one of the things that I find really interesting about Moses is you know, as you're reading through books like Exodus and Deuteronomy, etc. You know, you really find you really find that over and over and over and over and over and over, the Bible says. And the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, and the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, and the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, and the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, over and over and over and over again. And if you look at verse Chapter 33, I mean, that's and that's exactly how chapter 33 starts out. Look at verse 1. And the Lord said unto Moses, And the Lord said unto Moses, And the Lord said unto Moses. Now, just, just think for a bit how over these last, I think, three weeks or so, we've been talking about Joshua. And we've been talking about how Joshua um, was being groomed. And after Moses died, now Joshua has taken over for him. And of course, as we've talked about, he, well, what does he tell Joshua? He says, do not let this word depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate therein day and night that you may observe to do according to all my word. And that's Joshua chapter one, and verse eight. And he tells him this, why? So that whatever he does, wherever he goes, he would prosper. Now, what made Moses' life so impactful, so powerful? What made him such a mighty man of God? Well, I would say the first thing was that he believed what God said to him. So whenever God would speak to him, he believed it. He didn't question it. He didn't doubt it. He just believed it. 
Now, the Bible also says about Moses that he was the meekest, in other words, you could say the most humble of all the men on the earth. So in other words, what allowed Moses to not, to not only hear what God said, because number one, we have to have the sensitivity to be able to hear what God is saying. We must not only believe what he is saying, but in order to believe it, we have to hear it. We have to hear what he is saying. We have to hear it. Now, I don't just mean hearing the simple words that are written in the word, but it has to be deeper than that. It's not enough to just know what he says. It's not enough to just know what he has said. We must be able to comprehend it. We must be able to make sense of it. We must have the understanding of it. We, 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 we can't just see the words on the page. We have to hear the voice that is behind the words. We have to hear the voice. Psalm 29, verse 1. Give unto the Lord, O you mighty, give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory to his, unto his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon many waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. Yea, the Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes them also to skip like a calf. Lebanon and Syrian, like a young unicorn. The voice of the Lord, look at this, look at this, look at this, you guys, look at this. The voice of the Lord divides the flames of fire. That is impossible. Who can divide the flames of fire? But the voice of the Lord can do it. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the hinds to calve and discovers the forests. And in his temple 
doth everyone speak of his glory. The Lord sits upon the flood. Yea, the Lord sits king forever. The Lord will give strength unto his people. The Lord will bless his people with peace. See, the voice of the Lord brings peace. See, it's not enough to just know what the Bible says. We have to hear the voice behind it. We have to hear the voice behind it. We have, because listen, every, every, every word that is in this Bible came from the mouth of God. No, no, listen, it came from the mouth of God. He spoke it to the prophets, to the various men and women of God, and they wrote it down. They wrote down what he said. words every single word came from the mouth of god almighty his voice is power his voice is full of majesty see why 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 is it so important why must we hear the voice of God? Because you cannot hear from God and then doubt it. Have you ever noticed that? Once God speaks to you, you don't doubt it. Whether he speaks to you through the written word and he illuminates it and he, and he brings that revelation, that understanding, when he brings that, you don't doubt it. But when he speaks something so deeply to your heart and you know it's God, you can't doubt it. So we must, we must hear the voice behind the word. That's what that's what made. Moses' ministry so powerful. He believed what he heard. He heard from God and he believed it. He heard from God and he believed it. Jeremiah. Uh, let's see, what is that? Jeremiah 23, verse 29. Verse 28. The prophet that has a dream, let him tell a dream. And he that has my word, let him speak my word faithfully. He that has my word, not he that just knows what it says, but he that has my word. In other words, he that has heard from me, the one that has heard from me, let him speak my word faithfully. What is the chaff to the wheat, saith the Lord? Is not my word like as a fire? 
See, his word is a fire. His word will burn up in your life anything that shouldn't be there. Is not my word like a fire, says the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces. See, the word will break those rocks, those boulders, those things that are trying to stand in your way, those areas of your heart that maybe have been hardened through unbelief, through fear, through doubt, his word will come and his word will break the rock in pieces. Let's go back to Exodus again. So the Lord said unto Moses, see, the Lord was always speaking to Moses. Why, 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 why? Because Moses was humble enough to recognize. I don't have the answers. He was humble enough to recognize. I don't know how to do this. He was humble enough to recognize. God knows more than me. God is the one with the answers. So if he has the answers, watch this. All I have to do is hear what he says, watch this, and then do it. That's all I have to do. All I have to do is hear what he says and then do it. Go to John chapter 2. And yes, I am aware we have not even started with Exodus yet. But we will get there, I'm sure. <laughs> Go to John chapter 2 and wait. Yeah, John chapter 2. Okay, let's just start in verse 1. <clears throat> and the third day, there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee. And the mother of Jesus was there. And both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage, to the wedding. And when they wanted wine, or in other words, when they ran out of the wine, okay, when there was no more wine, the mother of Jesus said unto him, they have no wine. So Jesus said unto her, woman, what have I to do with you? My hour has not yet come. In other words, what does your concern about the wine have to do with me? None of my business. My hour has not yet come. But watch this. Watch what she says. His mother said unto the servants, whatever he says to you, do it. Whatever he says to you, do it. Watch this. You want to know something really, really deep? That was the key to the miracle. They just did what he said. They just believed him enough to do what he said to do. And what do they do? Of course, he told them, hey, take those six barrels of water. Of wa take those six barrels that are empty. Fill them with water. Okay. That doesn't make any sense. They need wine. They don't need water. But what did they do? They did what he said. 
<laughs> hey, listen. In the school of faith, obedience is it. Obedience is it. Whatever he says to you, do it. I don't care how crazy it looks, how crazy it sounds, how crazy it seems. It might not make any sense. Whatever he says to you, do it. That's the key to your miracle. Just do what he says. Just believe what he says and do what he says. See? And so sure enough, they filled him up all the way to the brim. And then he said, okay, now draw some out of there and go give it to him. He said, even go give it to the, to the governor of the feast. He said, go give it to the governor of the feast. Or you could say the head man in charge, the master, the, the, the big dog, the top dog. Well, guess what? They had to believe what he said. Otherwise, they never would have done what he said. Because here he's telling them, hey, you see those barrels that I just filled with water? Go take that water and give it to the head man in charge. Can you understand if they show up to the head man in charge who's asking for wine and they bring him water, it's probably not going to go well for them. <laughs> but all they did was they believed what he said and they did it. They believed what he said, and they did what he said. Look what she says, verse 5. Whatever he says to you, do it. Whatever he says to you, just do it. So we have to hear the voice. We have to hear the voice. And you say, well, how, how, do, how do I hear that voice? Lord? Kyle, how do I hear the voice of the Lord? How do I hear the voice behind the scriptures? How do I do that? Well, Kyle, what if I'm just reading the scriptures and, and I'm not hearing God's voice behind them? Well, why do you think God told Joshua what he told him? Turn, let's go there again. Go back to Joshua again. Joshua chapter 1. Verse 8. Just look at what he said to him. He said, This book of the law, in other words, this word of God. Look at, look at this word of God that he has given us. spoken right out of the mouth of God. He said, don't, don't let this word depart out of your mouth. In other words, keep talking about it. Keep saying it. Keep saying, but I don't, but I don't hear the voice of God. But I don't even, but I don't believe it. But what if I don't believe it, Kyle? I don't believe what he said. He's telling me that I'm healed and I got all this pain. Or he's telling me that I'm delivered and I'm tormented. I'm under all this oppression. I'm under all this pressure. Hey, 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 hey. That's okay. That's why he says, don't let it depart out of your mouth. In other words, keep it in your mouth continually. Keep saying it. 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 Listen, when I... Several years ago, when I all of a sudden, I'm like, man, I'm dealing with major health issues. I got, you know, 
inflammation. They said chronic inflammation in, in my stomach and my small intestine. There was all kinds of stuff going on in my large intestine, uh, so in my esophagus. I mean, there was all kinds of these different issues going on. I didn't believe that I was healed. Because if I did, I wouldn't have had that going on. See, So I had to take the word and I had to put it in my mouth. And I had to keep it in my mouth. And I had to keep meditating on it. Just like he says here. He says, don't let it depart out of your mouth, but meditate therein day and night. That you shall observe to do according to all that is written therein. See, then you'll make your way, your way prosperous. And then you'll have good success. So I had to put it in my mouth and I had to keep on saying it and keep on saying it and keep on saying it and keep on saying it day after day after day after day. Why? Because I needed, I needed to see it. I needed to hear it. I needed to hear the voice behind those scriptures. I need to hear the voice behind scriptures like, I've been delivered from the power of darkness and translated into the kingdom of his dear son, the kingdom of light. And it took time because at that time I didn't believe it. I wasn't hearing the voice of God behind the word like I needed to. So I had to start saying it, even though my body was hurting and this was going on and that was going on and it was rough. but I had to say what God said. So that I could get what he said. So that I could have what he said. So we've got to get to that place where, where we can see it, where, where we can hear the truth of God's word. And, and it's real. It's not just, yeah, yeah, God said that. Yeah, well, man. You, you can ask so many people and they know what God has said in the word, but yet it's not producing for them. Why? They haven't heard. They haven't heard, truly heard the depth of it to the point where they understand it and now they've got it. They haven't, they haven't meditated on it and said it enough until it's so real to them that they can see it, that they can just they can just hear it from the Lord. So real, so authentic, so genuine. Yes, this is the truth. Yes, this is what's real. See, if you look at the book of John, And just look, for example, at like, we could look at John 17, 17. You could look at John chapter 8. Um, everybody knows John chapter 8. Uh, let's see. Like verse 32. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Well, here's, here's what we need to understand. That word truth. Do you want to know what truth really means? If you look it up in the concordance, one of the definitions of truth is reality. It's reality. See, we have to accept what God says as reality. We cannot accept the sickness as reality. We cannot accept the lack as reality. We cannot accept the failure as a reality. No, no, no. 
God has said that everything that we do should prosper. Everything we touch, everything we do, it should prosper. So failure should not be a part of our lives. <laughs> I mean, man, this is good tonight. Failure should not be a part of our lives because the reality is that he made us to prosper everywhere that we go. See, you should not have any oppression in your life. Why? Because the reality is that you've been delivered. But his word has to become reality to us. We, we, we have to hear it and see it in a way that it's reality. That this is what's real. And I'm not saying all sickness or pain is a figment of your imagination. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not denying the reality of the difficult situations or, or the sicknesses, those things are very real. They're very real. But the word of God is more real. See? It's, it's, see, faith is not just pretending that something isn't there. That's not faith. It's not, it's not just, it's not like, like you know, I heard a story. Creflo, one time he was in a restaurant, ran up, came up to a gal and um, you know, she recognized him, and, and so he said hello, and she, she had a cast on her arm, and it was in a sling, and he said, oh, how'd you break your arm? She said, my arm's not broke. He's like, well, I can pretty clearly see that <laughs> you got the cast, you've got the sling, I can pretty clearly see that it's broken. No, my arm's not broke. That's not faith. That's not faith. Faith is not pretending what's happening is not real. No. Faith is taking the greater reality of the word of God and changing what's there into the true reality. Faith is not saying that sickness doesn't exist. Faith is saying sickness does not have the right to exist in my life because Jesus has made me free from a law of sin and death. And that includes all sickness. And by the stripes of Jesus, hey, I have been healed. So, and then watch this. I have the life of God in me. So if I have the life of God, sickness has no right to touch me. Now, if sickness does touch me, now I go to work enforcing the reality of the truth. I don't sit there and pretend like it's not there, but I also don't magnify it. And I don't make that sickness as though it's bigger than God, as though it's bigger than the reality of the word of God. No. The word of God always triumphs over everything else. There's nothing higher than the word of God. Watch this. The Bible even says he magnified the word even above his name. There's nothing higher than the word of God. Nothing. There's nothing higher than the word of God. But it has to be real to us. It can't, it can't just be words on a page. It can't just be words on a page. I had somebody say to me, that was quite a few years ago, but I had somebody say to me something to the effect of like, you know, saying, you know, oh yeah, I, Cal, you're, you know, you're, you're a theologian. <laughs> and I didn't really, it just kind of caught me off guard. I didn't really know what to say. I was like, 
and it, I knew it didn't it didn't sit right, but I didn't understand why. I'm like, oh, okay. I guess, yeah, I mean, I guess I could be, I mean, I really love the word of God, so I suppose, I mean, I studied a lot, and but I realized I'm not a theologian. I'm just somebody that believes what God has said, and so I want to know everything that I can possibly know about what he has said. And I want to study it and know it and hear it and see it until it's so real to me. The opposite cannot exist in my life. That's how the Lord showed me. He said, hey, he gave me this, this statement that says, if it can't touch God, it can't touch me. Why? Because he lives in me. I have his life. I have his ability. I have his faith. I have his peace. I have his love. I have his joy. He made me just like him. And he lives inside of me. And it's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. So if Christ is the one living in me, then how in the world could fear operate in my life? How in the world could sickness operate in my life? If Christ is living in me, it's impossible. Why? Did sickness operate in the body of Jesus? No, 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 no. What about fear? No. No. Isn't that so wonderful? It's amazing. It's just hearing the truth, hearing the voice behind the truth of the word of God so that it becomes a reality. Your freedom, the, the reality, the reality, the reality the reality that you have been delivered from the power of darkness, from the authority of darkness, and translated into the kingdom of God, into the kingdom of his son, into the kingdom of light, into the kingdom of love. The reality of that has to be more real than the oppression has to be more real than the fear. And once it becomes more real than the fear or than the oppression or than the pressure, then all of a sudden, the pressure goes. The oppression goes. The fear goes. But it just, it, listen, faith is hard work. Faith is hard work. But all hard work brings a profit. That's what the Bible says. The Bible says all hard work brings a profit. So even though faith is hard work, it's worth it because it pays off. Because when you put the work in to build your faith, when you put the work in studying the word of God, hearing from God, what do you have to say to me, Lord? What do I need to hear? What are you trying to tell me? When you take the time to meditate on the truth of his word concerning your situation, you're going to hear the truth of it, and it's going to become real to you. And it's that moment when it becomes real that the manifestation comes. That's when it comes.
Mm, 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 mm. Mm. Wow. Okay, look, just just look at this. Okay. Look at verse 36. But the son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. I know that you are Abraham's seed, but you seek to kill me. Why? Because my word has no place in you. My word, what I, the things that I have said, they have no place in you. You have not accepted them. You have not embraced them. They have not become reality to you. Now look over here at verse 42. Jesus said to them, hey, if God were your father, then you'd love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Now watch this. Why do you not understand my speech? He says, because you cannot hear my word. Because you cannot hear my word. Because you're not hearing what I am saying to you. In other words, you're not giving it the attention and the reverence that it deserves. You're not giving it the reverence and the attention and the respect that it deserves. You got to meditate on it. You got to think about it. You got to say it. You got to believe it. Think about this. He says, you are of your father, the devil. And the lusts of your father, you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning. And he abode not in the truth. Because there's no truth in him. Now look at this. We have a second time now he said this. First in verse 37, now again in verse 44. Because the truth, the word, is not in them. It was not in the devil. It was not in the Pharisees. The word has to get in us. It has to be in us. It has to be alive in us. We have to accept it and embrace it. Watch this. Until it becomes a part of us. He said he abode not in the truth because there's no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks of his own or from his own nature. For he is a liar and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, you believe me not. See? So how, how does the truth get in you? You have to not only hear it, but we have to believe it. When we believe it, now it gets in us. You say, but Kyle, I've been trying to believe it. No, 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 no. Listen. Don't worry. You just have to stick with it. You keep meditating on it. You keep saying it. You keep studying it. Study out the word. Find out what it says. Study it out. And you will get there. And then you'll start, the more that you're looking at it, the more that you're saying it, the more that you're thinking about it, meditating on it, considering what it says, considering what it means to you then you will come to the place where you begin to believe it. And then when you believe it, that word then gets in you deeply. And then it becomes a part of you. He said, which of you convinces me of sin or convicts me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do you not believe me? He said, I'm speaking the truth. 
Why don't you believe me then? Why don't you believe me? I'm telling you the truth. So why aren't you believing me? They're not giving his word the place it deserves. Okay, now watch this. Just watch this. He that is of God, watch this. He that is of God hears God's words. And that is the best news that any of us could probably ever hear nearly outside of, hey, if you believe it in your heart and you say it with your mouth, you can be saved and you will be saved because you are of God. So if you are of God, you can hear his words. <laughs> you can hear his words. You can hear his words. You can hear his words. You can hear what he says. You can hear the voice of the Lord behind the scripture. Hi, buddy. Yeah. Yeah, I know. It's okay, bud. It's okay. Oh, glory to God. Oh, my goodness. We haven't even gotten to Exodus yet. When are we going to get there? I mean, I should think we'd get there at some point. All right. Hmm. Look at this. Look at look at verse 29 in chapter 8. Watch this. Wow. Oh, come on, man. Look at this. And he that sent me is with me. Doesn't that sound a lot like what he said to Moses? as well as what he said to Joshua. He said, for lo, I am with you always. All right, look at it. Again, Joshua chapter one. And he said the same thing to, to Moses too, by the way. He said, in verse five, there shall not any man be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so will I be with you. I will not fail you, and I will not forsake you. Look at that. And then in verse 9, he says, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dis dis dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with you wherever you should go. Mm. And so here now Jesus is saying, hey, he that sent me is with me. He that sent me is with me. He that sent me is with me. The Father has not left me alone. For I always, no, watch this. For I do always those things that please him. In other words, okay, so how, how can he always do those things that please him? What does that mean? That means he always does what the Father says. That's what he does. He said, I always do what the Father says. In fact, I think he even says that in John chapter I believe. Isn't it like 5.30? Let's see. Well, yeah, I mean, in 5.19, he says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing of himself, but what he sees the Father do. For what things soever he does, these things also does the Son likewise. Verse 30, I can of my own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge. 
and my judgment is just because I seek not my own will. In other words, I seek not what I want to do. I seek not what I think is best, but I seek the will of the Father that has sent me. In other words, I seek out what he is telling me to do. What is his will for my life? What is he instructing me to do? I'm not here to do my own will. I'm not here to do what I think is best. I'm not here to do what I want to do. I'm here to do the will of the Father that sent me. And because he's the one that sent me, he knows what to, he knows what I need to do in order to succeed. And it's exactly what he told Joshua. Don't let the word get out of your mouth. Meditate in it day and night so that you can do what it says. Because if you will do what it says, in other words, if you will do what I've said, then your prosperity and your success, watch this, is guaranteed. No matter where you go, no matter what you do, no matter what you set your hands to, your success, your prosperity is guaranteed. Boy. I tell you what, this is a mighty good word tonight. Oh my goodness. It's just, it's just too much sometimes. So again, 829, he said, I always do those things that please. In other words, I always do what he says. Because the Bible says, faith, listen, without faith, it is impossible to please him. So faith is what pleases God. Well, what is faith? Faith is believing what he said and doing it. It's not just hearing it. Now, faith comes by hearing, but you can't operate just by hearing it. You've got to hear it and then believe it so you can do it. And see, when we believe it and then we do it, now the manifestation comes. And that's all that I did. I just kept speaking the word. I kept speaking it. I kept declaring over myself that I was healed, that I was full of the life of God, and my entire body was healed. And I kept saying it, and kept saying it, and kept saying it, and kept saying it. And look, did it take some time? Yes. Did it take some persistence? Yes. How about some, some, some patience? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because it took a good year and a half, two years. But would I trade in the work that it took for those, those couple of years, those 18 or 24 months? Would I trade that in for, for not doing it? No way. Because it paid off. I put the work in. I kept meditating on it. I kept saying it. I kept thinking about it. I kept digging into the word. I kept reading books about healing. I kept reading books about deliverance, freedom, authority. And eventually I got to that place where it became reality. And then I was healed. And the same will happen for you too. Praise the Lord. Well, we're really at about our time. So I guess we'll wrap it up here. Uh, and maybe next week, maybe next week we can get into Exodus 33. That's, I mean, it's powerful uh, chapter. Um, but the Lord took us where he wanted us to go. And that's what matters. So Father, we thank you for your word tonight. We thank you that we, that because we are of God, we can hear the words of God. And I thank you that we believe what you've said. We believe it. We believe it. We believe it. And we do it. We do it. We prove our faith by doing what you've said. We prove our faith by doing what you said. Yeah. 
That's it. So we thank you, Lord, that we hear the voice of the Lord behind the scriptures. That voice that is powerful, that is full of majesty. That voice that is like fire, that divides the flame of fire. That, that burns up everything in our lives that is not supposed to be there. That voice and that word that is a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces. <laughs> Man, that's good. Oh, man. Thank you, Lord. What a wonderful word you gave us tonight. I mean, that was amazing. That was amazing. Um. And Lord, we, we also honor you tonight with our tithes and our offerings. And Lord, we, we believe what you've said in the area of giving our tithes and in the area of giving our offerings. And, and we prove to you that we believe you by doing what you've said. And we give our tithes to you tonight. We give our offerings to you tonight. We bring these offerings to you, Lord, as gifts to your kingdom and to your church. These, these gifts are holy to you. And we treat them as holy. And we love you, Lord. We bless every seed that is sown. Lord, I ask you to meet the needs of the people. Meet the needs. Meet every need that they have. Meet every desire, every want, every dream that they have. Fulfill their biggest, wildest dreams in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen.